Hey, greetings to you all citizens of the world. This is Open Up with Silo Make Kangube. And uh, as always, I only start with a little quotation, you know. And this time is coming from, uh, I think they call him the social media poet. And he is known as, uh, as R.H. Sin. And he's written a beautiful little line which hits home for me. And this is, what she, this is what he says. The most dangerous woman of all is the one who refuses to rely on your sword to save her because she carries her own. Isn't that interesting? And I think today I've got that kind of a woman who in some way as much as life can be challenging, but she doesn't walk around dependent on somebody else's sword. She carries her sword. She is a woman's rights activist. She's a feminist, anti-gender-based violence and femicide campaigner, social entrepreneur, and she's registered as an agile project manager practitioner, a mother who dedicates her life to fighting against all forms of discrimination against women and children in South Africa. And ladies and gentlemen, her name is Kamuhelo Seleka. Welcome, Oscar Mahelo. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for, for embarking, embracing us with your time and sharing this moment of, you know, talking of opening up and just having fun. You know, we're opening up to memories. Yeah. You know, some would be painful, some will be joyous, some will make us cry, some will make us laugh. How's work? Yeah, Originally, you're from Mafiki. Yes, yes. I, mm -hmm. I came to Joburg in 2001. That was like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Mafikeng is a small town, right? And opportunities are limited for mm -hmm, high. Mm -hmm. So, we every young child of a dance school who wants to see themselves, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is where how things like it, it carries us. It carries our dreams. Right. This is where we extend ourselves mm -hmm. beyond um, school. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So I was one of those. I, I thought. Man, I cannot talk about it, but I can go to mining for a thing. Okay. I'm also coming to the gold. Gold, yeah, yeah. So I'm here. I'm at the bottom platinum. I'm at the bottom. I'm at the bottom. You know. Growing up, ko ma ma fikin. You know. What did did you do sub A or grade one? Grade one, grade one. Okay. No, grade one, grade one. Oh, you did grade one. You did grade one. Okay. I'm not that Asian. Well, not about to be sub A. Yeah. You know, level four, four. Yeah. And when I have to go back to the school, I'm not sure. I get up and I look at you, baby, son. You don't pronounce some. I think you are wrong. Why are pronouncing F? F is F. Barke. Ha. Ha. So who had so who am I? Yeah, we are talking about. You know, and then we look like Karnada Nadi from one, from two, from three in high school. So we are going. Yeah, we go home one. You know, we go home five. Yeah. But you call five five. Yeah. Do they call it five or five? <laughs> you growing up in Mafikeng, ma. Yeah. Your childhood, little games that you played, yeah. that stays in your memory. I... That know that you know that you know they sort of formed your childhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was I was one of those very much a TV game. Oh hi. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ne kiri mana wa teacher le le mistress. Right, right. Okay. So we spend a lot of time go high playing Monopoly. Right, okay. We played um, TV game. All right. We okay. played table tennis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was that kind of family, right. very close knit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if I needed to go 
play, see my friends. It will be over the weekend. Right. Because we also I I liked but no pele no kamari those shows that were show road to fame. Right, right. So we right. used to imitate both abashante, gumsha. Okay, we had the abashante and gumsha at the same time. Okay. Yeah. And then school, you know. Memories that I have, especially maybe for me, as you know, as far as school is concerned, my yes. I, I think pivotal moment when I was at school was when I was in standard three. That's grade one, grade five. Yeah. Talking about childhood, one pivotal moment in my childhood is when I was in standard three, mm -hmm. and I think that was a moment that sort of would shape even maybe my interest in acting and all that, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Standard three, our teacher gives us a uh, working recitation, yeah. uh, all things bright and beautiful that we should go and memorize. Mm -hmm. And what I do, you know, I think I don't know how, how it happened, but a moment in class when my teacher said, "Okay, Bana, kemang otai tang recitation ya all things bright and beautiful." Yeah. Who raised his hand? Yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mark. Eh? <laughs> I went in front, you know, and I could fit up quietly, and I kept it hanging like a short penny. I'm sure Mama did rehearse me because my understanding of English was very limited at that time. But anyway, here I was standing in front of my tie and short penny, saying, All things bright and beautiful. All things bright and beautiful, yeah. all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, yeah. the Lord God made them all. And I think that is, um, uh, you know, I, I always look at that moment as a moment that just sort of, you know, sort of shaped me because I know after that the whole thing of reciting and doing what became my way, you know, up until standard six. You know, when we were doing handwork, now I, would, I wasn't good with my hands, but I was the one who they were called to go and recite for the inspector. What is yours, if you have any? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say that um, I was a very active child, because I loved mm -hmm. the sport, and yeah. um, I did gymnastics, I did, I did the... I can't even hear the drums. No, no, no. Drum majorettes. Drum majorettes. Okay. I did those, but you know that that was another side of me. That, yeah. That was another camera. Mm -hmm. And then I also like to imitate um, mm -hmm. the, the, the 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 most popular artist in the country. Right. To right. Have a so you are you are very you are very artistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is not something that I I followed. Mm -hmm. I just loved being a leader. Okay. I loved to lead projects. Okay. If there was a group, I loved to lead it. Yeah. So I think my thing was, you know, leadership. Okay. You know, okay. I wanted, I didn't want to do, use my hands as you also did. I just wanted mm. to find solutions right. to, to problems that we had at hand. Okay. So my thing has always been, I want to lead from the front. Okay. Yes. No, no, and this is where I am. No, the, the, yeah. and that is exactly what you're doing. Yeah. So this whole thing of wanting, imitating, I can Yeah, and then we saw them on TV. Yeah, like, yeah. You're dreaming, you're thinking, man, hey, maybe I could, you know. Mm -hmm. But also it's part of entertainment in the right. school environment mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the community. You know, mm -hmm. as I said, we also participated in Google Showroom to Fame. Mm -hmm. So it kept us away from body drugs and right, yes. other you know, uh, things that are improper. In fact, well, not because you were from Mafiking. I mean, you grew up at the height or at the time when Re Lucas Mangoto was in charge, mm. you know. <laughs> and one can decry the Bantustanism in him or that he f followed, but then the infrastructure and the cultural infrastructure, how did that impact on you? So, my thinking is uh, back then, yes. it, it, it was very different. Mm -hmm. It was very different in, in a sense of, it was also called Santa Barbara. 
you know, if you watch Santa Barbara on okay, MNS, okay, back okay. in the days, All right, okay. yeah, we, we had like Bomulopo Task, Marato San, back then, yes, and mm -hmm. we had like things that other provinces didn't, didn't have, have back then. We like, you had TV. We had that, you had yeah, TV. we had, okay. we had that, and the radio station, and, boy, hey, and radio remember ball. our stadium as well, mm -hmm. we had, we had like, we were very progressive. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, also he took care of um, the, the the civil workers. He, he took care of Bomaruna, Bonta Karuna, okay, yeah. and we had a day where he he would call us all. Mm -hmm. We call yeah. it Independence Day. I don't right. I don't I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> and we're which, from which day was there, which, which day was it? December. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> well, how come Bamadjuranko Machayeng ko hagara hagara they were coming buses mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Will fill up that stadium, and he, let me tell you, he'll feed us all. Mm -hmm. There was something about Ntato Oli. Everybody, I was an elementary teacher, I don't know if you know what it was, mess. It was, we came in numbers. Yeah. And that's how he loved his people, and yeah. you know how he called us mm -hmm. my people. My <laughs> Batubami. <laughs> Batubami. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, do not be like this. You remember there's this story where he said, hey, Emele uh, Sama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your, if you would speak of your teenagehood, your teenage life, what, what is the one thing that is, you know, standing out for you yeah. that you recall and you maybe even say, this is what formed me? I think um, I grew up in a family that mm -hmm. uh, had domestic violence, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I would say my when I, when I was a teenager now, when I realized that this is the monster that we faced with in the family, right? Yes. I then started being resilient. I started being resilient mm -hmm. in school, mm -hmm. in the community, mm -hmm. and I, I started being aware of mm -hmm. myself. You know, right, I started yeah. wanting to. To stand up, even yeah. when it was not important, necessary for me to stand yeah. up, you mm -hmm. know. And I, basically, standing up was fighting for... Fighting back. Fighting back, fighting yes. Back mm -hmm. What was being projected to me. To, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I I would say that those, uh, those, those moments where I had to witness my mother mm -hmm. go through the domestic violence in the house mm -hmm. is what actually helped to groom me as a person too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what would you say specifically is the thing that you picked up and that shaped you to be who you are today? It's, it's as I'm saying, it's... And, you know, speaking about that resilience yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's being resilient, like you, you're being brought up with trauma, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think uh, society mm -hmm. understands the amount of trauma Mm -hmm. That a child, I mean, you, you at an early age, being exposed to such, you know, brutality mm -hmm. in the house. This is weekend after weekend, weekend. Yeah. and there is no way when I, where I get to offload yeah. the trauma that I'm carrying. Kidding, yes, you know, yes. whether there's a spot, uh, whether Chiefs and Paris is playing. If, if mm. parents, Paris is going to lose, I know Gonclo is not going to be nice. Wow. You know, so. I I grew up knowing that I have to stand up and stick with me, mm -hmm, no mm -hmm. matter what, you okay. know, and stick with those that give you love. It's yeah. very important. You need to embrace those people that give you love, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, it was that that I, I managed to be resilient and and you know, not take that trauma with me mm -hmm. um, to my adulthood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do go through episodes of my own where yeah. I get triggered by the past the experience. Experiences, you know, yes, it's my yes. lived experience. Mm -hmm. It's not going to leave me. I don't care how many 
um, therapy uh, sessions I can mm -hmm. attend, but mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. my lived experience. That's so it, yeah. that taught me that, you know, things, things are going to happen, mm -hmm. but it will get better. Right. And you need to stand by you. I don't know if you understand me. You mm -hmm. need to stand by you. Yeah. Nobody will carry you as much as you can mm -hmm. carry yourself. Mm -hmm. I see, you see, actually, you make me realize or that, that quote, or you don't rely on the sword of the guy. You, you carry your you own sword. You have to. <laughs> you yeah. Know. yeah. This brings us to the NPO that you know. what? What's the inspiration behind it? Yeah. Your NPO. I have, so I fast forward mm -hmm. John is back. Yeah. Um, in 2018, I was sexually violated oh, by sorry. a police officer, mm -hmm. a man that took oath that he will protect me as a community. Yeah. You know, um, you know, they that. take the oath to mm -hmm. when they've been trained, when they're going through them. Yeah. Yeah. So. I decided to take that experience and, and put it to good use, right. you know? So my activism mm -hmm. and um, my desire to want to, to help others and mm -hmm. be a voice mm -hmm. for, for the voiceless comes from that space of being raped mm -hmm. by men that were supposed to actually protect. protect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is um, why social justice was born. Okay. You know, I mm -hmm. decided that that experience, mm -hmm. let me just take it, yeah. you know, and turn it into the positive. Let me use it mm -hmm. to help the many other women mm -hmm. who never have opportunities mm -hmm. like some of us are being granted. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and, uh, I mean this is not to, to try and maybe trivialize what you're saying. Yeah. But here is this horrible experience, mm. and in it, in, in it, basically, you can pick up and you can pick up dirt, mm -hmm. you know. And Steve Harvey has this thing where he says, somehow in your life, mm. you know, in order for you to grow, yeah. though I mean he puts it in a very nice analogy because all he says, I think it's like, for a seed to grow. Yeah. It needs dirt, and somehow from that dirt, it is going to grow and, you know, you know, you know. Yeah. Do, yeah. Did you think that? Yeah. You know, you grow roots and try and milk something that now yeah. begins to reform you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that is so correct. Mm -hmm. Um, I I don't think you know. I'm also not um trying to make this look like i don't i'm not trying to i'm not condoning rape yeah i'm not to i'm not trying to make this look beautiful mm -hmm. it's rape is a dark place it to is be. i would imagine so i'm just saying that from that experience mm -hmm. i was able to reform mm -hmm. i came out as a different person mm -hmm. should that incident um should it should it never have happened? Mm -hmm. I most probably wouldn't have had had this mm -hmm. heart that I'm having now. Yeah. This, this view that I'm having now. I mean, the the courage I'm having now to want to speak out, to mm -hmm. want to help and reach out mm -hmm. to, to to the vulnerable groups, mm -hmm. to women who are abused on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, it changes you. It's 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 it's, it's a situation where you need to come out because also when you stay in that situation, mm. you you are dwelling in mm. in a dark space. space yes, so yes. it's a decision that you need to take for mm -hmm, you to come mm -hmm, out. Mm -hmm. So as you are saying, when you come out, you come out mm -hmm. as a Reform. a beautiful flower uh, yeah so it's also a decision if you want to come as a beautiful flower mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. come out angry i'm yeah. not blaming any woman who comes out angry yeah. we heal differently mm -hmm. so i decided to do this for my healing mm -hmm. for my peace and to help build a different environment a better environment for, for south africa you know um you you, you spoke about your father and when one looks at the father figure, one sees somebody who should protect. Yeah. 
we should nurture. And then now, you go outside your home, and here again, here's the almost like it's a, it's like it's a repeat. This person dawned in what should serve, and he should be serving that protection. Is the very person who violates you. If we, you were to say something, I think, to male folk with regards to that, what yeah. would you say to us? Um, you know, I also, I, I, I will say something, but mm -hmm. I also don't want this to be left on my shoulders or mm -hmm. on another woman's shoulders yes, yeah. for us to try and groom men. Mm -hmm. I think the approach should be men should start speaking to each other. Right. Men must speak amongst each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have a friend or you know a brother mm -hmm. or anyone, whoever, mm -hmm. as long as they male counterparts, yeah. you need to speak to them if you mm -hmm. know that they doing they're part of the social ills. That's it, yes. If you know that this man is abusive, speak to them. Mm -hmm. You know, and speak to each other's men. So if I were to say something, I, I can only ask men to have a behavioral change. Wow. Um, as I say that society, even now men, mm -hmm. will never understand the psychological impact mm -hmm. GBV has on individuals mm -hmm. because they don't actually get to experience what we go through, through yes. right? Mm -hmm. As much as I was raped mm -hmm. um, and I came out without a single bruise mm -hmm. or a scar, mm -hmm. you know, a visible scar, and it's taken that my healing should be quick, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's taken that I am not, I don't have emotional scars. Mm -hmm. Because people want to see the scars physically in the yeah. physical realm, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. men need to understand that mm -hmm. abuse, you know, it 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 it, it dents you from mm -hmm. within, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 the impact of it, you know, they they last longer, and it, it it's difficult for for um, a victim to mm -hmm. actually, you know, come out, mm -hmm. you know. And as I said, that we heal differently as yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So you, you can, if, I, if we have an uncle in the house, mm -hmm. let me make an example. If we have an uncle in the house and they decide, I don't know if it is a decision to violate a person, mm -hmm. that I still don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they decide to um, sodomize a five-year-old child, mm -hmm. the, this five-year this five-year boy doesn't mm -hmm. talk about it mm -hmm. and he doesn't get therapy he just grows up with this anger mm -hmm. then when he's older then he decides to murder women mm -hmm. he decides to rape women mm -hmm. because this he's never gotten the um psychological help, yes, exactly, help that yes. he, he needed mm -hmm. so he displaces his mm -hmm. anger he displaces is 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 pain mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. um and the victim is now a woman who mm -hmm. has nothing to do with his childhood mm -hmm. you know so it, it becomes a vicious cycle, cycle yeah. so man needs to have this behavioral change yes. and man needs to social distance men mm -hmm. need to social distance the fact that i'm wearing a skirt doesn't mean that mm -hmm. i'm asking for sex yeah men need to social distance the fact that you offering me a drink mm -hmm. doesn't mean that i'm giving you consent over, over my, my body, body yes. you have no right over my body, body as yeah. a man mm -hmm. so we need to social distance these issues mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. men right and as i'm saying that men need to really really start talking amongst themselves Self, yeah. let gender-based violence not be a women's issue of yeah right and basically we, we i mean what you in fact implying is that we need to call each other out yes definitely you know yeah if you were to describe what being a woman is like in south africa what would you say yeah so in my now somebody world, says, hey, hi, you yeah. know, what is being a woman like? Be, yeah. I mean, being a woman is or is like in South Africa. For me, it means having to watch over my back all the time. Mm. 
for me, it means I have to make sure before I go to bed, all my windows are closed tight. Mm. For me, it means before I go to bed, I need to double check, check if my doors are locked properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, it means that I don't trust any man who's a stranger who's willing to even give me a lift mm -hmm. to wherever destination I might mm -hmm. be wanting mm -hmm. to go to. For me, it means that I cannot dress as much as I want to dress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to downplay my character mm -hmm. so that I'm not seen as somebody who's enticing men. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. For me, it means that even if I meet a gentleman who wants to offer me a drink at a mm -hmm. club or a, a restaurant, mm -hmm. I cannot trust his intentions. Yeah, yeah. For me, it means that a perpetrator is more protected than a victim is. This is now in the judiciary system. Mm -hmm. That our a justice system protects a protect a, 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 a the perpetrator the more than it protects, protects me as a victim, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So it means that woman, we are on our own. We have seen the likes of Bo Helen Joseph, mm. Charlotte Makaike, right. Winnie Madikizera. Mm -hmm. And they, this is not a new struggle. Mm. I mean, they've, they've had to fight over mm. and over. I am here as Kamakala Selika. I am still fighting. This mm. is the South Africa we are living in as women. Mm -hmm. My daughter is six years old. What does it say? What does it mean? Mm -hmm. what, is the, what, what, is, what environment mm -hmm. is, is, uh, is, 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 is created for those that are coming after us? Mm -hmm. Are they still going to be fighting? So is a woman in South Africa born to be a fighter? Mm -hmm. That is the question. You know, one, one of the things that when I, um, I think reflect on this thing, yeah. Is that um, you know? I mean, as we were talking earlier on, you were talking about you didn't want to go work in the mine, yeah. you know, in Rustenburg. Yeah. But Johannesburg mm -hmm. became what it is as a result of mining, yeah. and because of that, they ended up basically. And this is what um, they, whatever the mine owners or the landlords and even the colonizers at that time. Yeah. And what they did was, before gold and diamond was discovered, uh, black people were made to pay what they call tax mm -hmm. using livestock. Yeah. But when mine, mines became, you know, uh, gold was discovered and diamond was discovered, then they needed uh, labor. Mm -hmm. And in order to get uh, labor, then they forced black men to, and they said, no more uh, Poltex paid with livestock. Yeah. Poltex now, you must pay it with money. Yeah. And which made, meant that it took men from their, um, you know, surroundings, and they came to Joburg to work, mm -hmm. and they came alone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes when we look, we don't see how that has impacted mm -hmm. on our social structure. Mm -hmm. Because there's also the thing of that now, men left women and children, yeah. And later on, women and children ended up even coming up mm. and found themselves having to do menial tasks and unsavory work mm. in order to survive. You know, and I think, you know, like, I think, you know, you talk about trauma. One thing that I think we also as black people, we need to deal mm. with, that, with that trauma. Mm. And, uh, you know, you speaking about what it's like for you to be a woman. Mm. And I just hope when the men are listening yeah. that you live in perpetual With fear. fear. With fear. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, we could be sitting as women and every, every single woman has a story to tell. Mm. It is, you know, those that are not telling, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they don't have stories. Yes. They're not ready yet to mm -hmm. come out. You know, we are... Um, we, besides that, we've been brought up with trauma from our own homes. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. go out to want to start a life in Gauteng, yeah, and then you are still met by the same violence that you survived, mm -hmm. you know, from your childhood, yeah, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. So, and the perpetrators, are, are, are in most cases, are men, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and it, and it's also men also have a thing of when we talk about gender based violence. Mm. They want to come with, but us also, we are being raped. But mm. GBV is not a 
women's, women's thing, thing only. only. Women also so suffer. So why are we not occupying, all of us, why are we not occupying these spaces to talk about, to address this gender-based violence? But uh, what, if ever you were to make an analysis, yeah. what do you think is the thing that makes us to fear, to engage in this conversation? Um, uh, one of the things would be... In your observation, yeah, yes. One of the things would be uh, people are scared to come out. Generally, people mm -hmm. are just not comfortable with coming out and confronting mm -hmm. their fears, yeah. confronting those skeletons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when you come out, you also don't want to be judged. Right. So you, you, we, we, we expect the reception to be warm. Mm -hmm. It is not usually warm. When mm -hmm. I came out as a, as a, as a, as a rape victim then, mm -hmm. you know, the thing that they first did mm -hmm. was to stigmatize me mm -hmm. and protect the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we live in a society mm -hmm. that is just like that. So, you know, right. it, it's, it's, it's in their nature to mm -hmm. want to stigmatize things. Right, you yes, know, it's yes. like black people are cursed with them. With the with the with the with the with the nature of wanting to stigmatize anything, whether you have mm. um, uh, corona, they will stigmatize you. Mm -hmm. Whether mm -hmm. you have HIV, they will stigmatize you. you. Whether yeah. your husband is beating you in the house, mm -hmm. they will stigmatize mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we are cursed mm -hmm. with that nature of wanting to stigmatize everything. Mm -hmm. So why would people want to come and engage? So I, I can, mean, would would you say now, and and, and I'm listening, to, and why do we like this? or we do this stigmatization mm. so much. Mm. Is it because of the trauma perhaps maybe that we, you, that we are carrying through our lives and also stemming from the days of colonialism and apartheid? It's, um, I think also as, as black people, you know, it's not funny. Mm. We, we are, we don't want to also grow from our past, past experiences. Yes. We want to carry, you mm -hmm. know, that's why I'm saying that also healing is a decision. Is a decision. Yeah. We yeah. want to carry everything, mm -hmm. one body carrying everything. Imagine I'm carrying all that trauma from right. my childhood, and that rape incident I'm carrying, and mm -hmm. my disappointments as a person also, my personal issues, mm -hmm. I'm carrying all that. Mm -hmm. We need to shed, we need to shed off you know, that, some, that, yeah. some weight. You know, know, I would like to, you know, our first time when we, you know, I think, I think we met and had lunch mm -hmm. with uh, our, our common yeah. uh, mutual friend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I cherish that meeting. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I, I never even shared, because we also engaged yeah. in this conversation yeah. around gender-based yeah. gender violence. And there's something that you said to me after I had told you about my own yes. experience yes. as a young man yeah. and uh, yeah, when I moment. used to be a perpetrator. Yes. And I, I always, you know, when I described it mm. and would talk about, you know, a solitary journey that I took. Yeah. But, you know, you helped me with one thing. Yeah. And you said your journey of redemption And that for me was, wow, yeah. Yeah. you know, was wow because, and yes, it has been a journey of redemption. Yes. Do you think, you know, we, we, we have the capacity looking at us as men mm -hmm. and opening it up that we can go through period or a process yeah. of redemption yeah so um, mm -hmm. one of my wishes mm -hmm. is for my um, perpetrator mm -hmm. my violator to come and stand by me and say what do I need to do I'll hold him by the head as much as there was a process that I helped him to get through mm -hmm. during our tribunal at his work, okay. I would really appreciate if he did that for me. And that would mean for me a full circle. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that would mean for me total healing. I don't know if there is a thing that is called total healing, mm -hmm. yeah. but that would bring me like closure. Yeah. You know, if mm -hmm. he came out and say, come on, 
I know the reason why this fund, this NPO was started, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm part of it. Mm -hmm. So, are you willing to even give me an opportunity mm -hmm. to redeem myself? Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if men were given that opportunity, mm -hmm. some will jump on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there is a lot of men that are out there, yeah. you know, and a lot of time I see, I, I see them being shut out. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Some women are not ready to even start working with men mm -hmm. because of their trauma, because of their experience. Right. You know, as I said, we heal different. Yes, yes, you know, yes. I know for sure there are men out there who are just crying to be a part of this mm -hmm. process, process of, of building a new South Africa, a safer South Africa. South Africa, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. If you were to give a young girl growing up, well, you've got a daughter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And almost you are, and I'm sure you are thinking, of, you are constantly yeah. thinking of ways of how to teach her to look at life. Mm -hmm. What are those teachings that maybe also might even help maybe another mother now who's looking or a young woman who's looking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I encourage my daughter to do all the time mm -hmm. is to speak out. Mm -hmm. If you do not like something, mm -hmm. if you don't appreciate anything, speak mm -hmm. out. Voice yourself. Have mm -hmm. a voice. Mm -hmm. So I let her, somebody might look at it and feel this child will go at heart. Mm -hmm. Because we like to oppress the young ones, or or not put it like a region. So I think it's a bit of a problem. domestic violence. Mm -hmm. When you try voice yourself, they said, "Kiri yeah. tava tava holo ngana wa kiri tava tava holo." So with mm -hmm. my child, I'm giving her an opportunity to also make her own decisions. Speak out. Speak out. Speak mm -hmm. out. There's there's nothing like ngana. I hate to look at somebody, Something, and they yeah. can't even come to you and say, "Mama." This man offered me this mm -hmm. if I did one, two, three, you know. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. need to allow our children from a young age mm -hmm. to be able to speak out. And yeah. speaking out, I mean, it, it, when we have better communication channels, mm -hmm. we we are able to engage. We are able right. to open up to me without mm -hmm. feeling feeling Hore Kam is going to judge that, me. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I mean I've created that platform for you, Hore Nana, you must and we speak, and mm -hmm. people will say this child is talkative, but mm -hmm. it is what I want what to do. Exactly, yeah. 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 You know, one, one, one of the things that I always say is that <clears throat> another amazing thing is that we go to school from grade one, we go to grade 12, you know, and from after between grade one and grade 12, you know, they are preparing us to prepare ourselves for. Yeah careers yes. of sorts, you know, and after that it's either you go and do technical, you know, school or go to uh, whatever, academia. Yes. And 12 years of your life as a child, you're being prepared to be a cog in the economic machine. And then you spend maybe another three, four years, you know, going to varsity or to technical school and now to perfect that whole process of you becoming a cog in the economic machine. And then after that, then you are thrown into life. You know, you've got a skill, <laughs> you know, and your skill is to either if you are a lawyer, you know, and if you are an electrician, you know, when somebody brings electrical problems, you deal with them. You some, somebody comes with legal problems, you know, no, no, I think we will use this legislation, this law to defend this and whatever, you know, and I'll do references for this. And you, you, you're clear about how to deal with, this, with things. But the ultimate thing that you are going to do, or even be, which is a mother or somebody's husband or wife, Nobody prepared you for it. Yeah. Have you ever maybe reflected on yeah. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what's your take on it? <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's quite a, a funny thing to mm -hmm. say, but I mean, it, it's a real life issue, mm -hmm. right? As, as a woman, uh, we are being told, Hore, uh, we have maternal instinct. What is that? Mm -hmm. What is maternal instinct? 
Yeah. I needed to be taught how to breastfeed a child. And I was so, you know, I, I didn't shy away from the fact that I didn't know how to breastfeed a child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to position it. I needed to be taught wow. how to. And I was open to my midwife and the nurse. Mm -hmm. And they came to my house because mm -hmm. mine was a home birth. Yeah. So already we had that relationship. Right, you know? So right. I'm just saying that adding to... We nobody prepares us to mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. and there is no manual to um, that a chapter of life of being a mother or being mm -hmm, a husband mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or a partner. You know, mm -hmm. we learn as we go. Got ready, prepared. Yeah, what we're, we're top up and, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, and, and uh, you know when I looked at that and uh, you know I just realized what well, you know what yeah this there's something there's there's something yeah. wrong with this whole system yeah. And if ever for and instance, the expectations are there. exactly, the exactly, are there. exactly. You yeah. know, there was uh, also I think I was listening on, on the radio at one point, yeah. and uh, this guy called in, and oh, in fact, somebody who had yeah. been, uh, remarked about a situation where they were holding men's talks, and this guy said, um, you know, barking being a man is such a burden, mm -hmm. you know. Um, because now he had just qualified from, you know, from varsity, yeah. got a job, but he was expected to drive a certain car. Yeah. He was expected to dress in a certain way. Yeah. He was expected to behave in a certain way. Yeah. What, 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 what's and, your and take can on you, that? Can you mm -hmm. imagine the pressure that comes with that? Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make an example. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had a colleague, and I wouldn't even mention um, the, the employer or the names because right, then yeah. I don't want to give away too much mm -hmm. and I don't want people to put together you know, mm -hmm. information so what I'm saying is he was very learned he, is, he was an analyst in that, um, in that uh, at that institution mm -hmm. and, and then he came back to me and he said Kamo, I had a breakdown and he reached out to me on, mm -hmm. on, on Facebook mm -hmm. you know, and on Messenger mm -hmm. he said Kamo, I had a mental breakdown Mm. And that to me, it 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 like it, it blew me off mm -hmm. to know that somebody of, of that caliber mm -hmm. who was so successful in front of us right, yeah. had to go through that. So you can imagine the pressures that men also have to mm -hmm. take in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Men are, are, are being groomed to be providers, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, why wouldn't they be providers? Because you, mm -hmm. you guys like to dominate. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. once a woman comes in and she's in, independent, mm -hmm. also that is another topic to another yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i'm just saying that men are dealing are constantly finding themselves uh, having to deal with mm -hmm. so much pressure and this is a, a societal standards you yeah. know, that are not talk, that are spoken about mm -hmm. these are the issues that we're not even addressing you know right yeah so um and, and i think men in general they are groomed not to 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 to, to address issues or mm -hmm. so, the icon yes. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they don't talk about mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we're not supposed to do that we mm -hmm. need to disturb that narrative yes. men need to learn to be expressive mm -hmm. men mm -hmm. need to speak out you know this thing of speaking out is very mm -hmm. important because mm -hmm. it, it would have saved a lot of them you mm -hmm. know a lot of men Mm -hmm. from being depressed and whatnot, you mm -hmm. know. And we take such things for granted, mm -hmm. you know. Imagine being expected to have a child, marry. It's, it's a system mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. just need to follow. And if you don't follow it, yeah. then you feel like you're a failure. Right. I am my C, the, the CEO of my foundation yeah. told me that yeah. there's an arrangement that she is doing with your foundation. Can you well. tell me about it? Share, yeah. share with us. What, what is the arrangement that you guys are, yeah. are, are cooking up? Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to embark on a national project right. campaign. Mm -hmm. um, our social justice is collaborating with the Solo Makaika Nube Foundation, Foundation yes. 
Um, I, we are going to be looking at um, all nine provinces to work with all nine provinces. So now, because we're based in Gauteng, yeah. I'm on board as an ambassador for Gauteng. We look for, we're looking for eight other ambassadors to yeah. join us. Mm -hmm. And I am going to be representing gender-based violence right, in right. Gauteng. And we're looking at many other forms of violence. We're not going to, many other issues, we're not only focused on um or on rape, because yes, my, yes. My, my, my thing is sexual violence. Yes, yes. So we're going to be looking at um, many other forms of violence, being mm -hmm. the LGBTQIA. Yeah. We're going to be looking at um, uh, women with disabilities. Exactly, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, many, other, many other issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to be launching the, the website, I think, in the coming week. Okay. And all the information will be there on the Solo Makeka Global Foundation right. website. Okay, yeah. well, thank you. I think it's going to be a great initiative to be mm -hmm. able to work with women across mm -hmm. all nine provinces, you know, to work on different, different issues things, yeah, that are yeah. touching us as women. You know, when we start, we think we've got all the time, but time is running out. Is Two questions that I want to ask you. Yeah. If you had a chance to fix one thing about your life, what would it be? I, you know, I would be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there isn't anything that I would want to fix. fix yeah. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because if I drop back mm -hmm. now, if, if when things happen, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a sad moment. I want to deal with that issue. I want to you know, feel, be, mm -hmm. be able to feel and experience. So you're a hands-on yeah, person. When, and experience uh, mm -hmm. the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. And then when you jog back, you mm -hmm. see that everything that is happening in your life is actually, you know, mm -hmm. aligned, mm -hmm. you know, for your purpose. Mm -hmm. So if I ever dared to change anything, then mm -hmm. it means I wouldn't be even sitting here with you mm -hmm. because then I'm, you know, um, interfering mm -hmm. with what the universe has prepared for me. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't. All mm -hmm. my struggles, my happy moments, mm -hmm. my sorrows, my yeah. happy, yeah, everything. I, I welcome everything and I'm embracing this life that I'm living. One word that would describe your life now? Um, in my own accord, successful. And you know, when you say successful, my mom says, Upon to me literally. That yeah. like success to me mm -hmm. doesn't define, doesn't say I've got money in my account. Mm -hmm. Well, Uskamu, thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Leave good grades, but it means as well, you heard for yourselves. Gentlemen out there, women live in absolute fear. They constantly have to watch their backs. And the most, I think, the, the sad thing is that they are not scared of animals. They are scared of us. Let's do something to change the narrative. Well, this is Siloma Kekanube saying to the blue.